Let it be known, there are a ton of RPGs coming this year. We put together a list of the stuff that sounds most promising to us. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the top 20 RPGs of 2019. Number 20 is Fire Emblem Three Houses, and let me just say, I am really excited for the first Fire Emblem game on a full-blown console since 2007. Radiant Dawn was on the Wii, and we ain't seen a non-3DS mainline Fire Emblem game in a while. It's a game that looks quite pretty, obviously it's a Switch title as opposed to a 3DS one, and they've done some modifications to the battle system where they're supposedly going to have troops supporting the individual units you control in the battlefield. Honestly, I think very promising. Looks really cool if you've seen the trailer. There's also some footage out. We'll supposedly be seeing that on the Switch sometime in the spring. Number 19 is Persona 5R. Let's just go ahead and say this. We don't know what Persona 5R is. We do know that whatever it is is happening in March. We have hopes. Let's just say, I have personal hopes it involves the Nintendo Switch and porting the original game to it, but the trailer we have associated with it has a PlayStation logo, so I have no idea. It could maybe be like a sort of a complete version like they did with Persona 3 or Persona 4 Golden, and maybe we could see it on the Switch, maybe? I don't know. Persona 5 is such a great game, but I swear I would really, really like it on the Switch. Guys, I'm sure it's possible. I'll be paying attention with great interest in March. Number 18 is Biomutant, a game that looks like a lot of different types of games mushed up into one open world action RPG. Like we can see some elements of Dark Souls and we can see some elements of more arcadey hack and slash, but until we really get time with the game, I don't know exactly what to say. There will be an extensive character creation tool, although you will be like playing as a raccoon pretty much. So, I mean, customization within the raccoon genus, I guess. I guess. It looks really cool, if I'm totally honest. All the footage I've seen actually looks genuinely like a lot of fun, and supposedly it's going to have branching storylines where decisions will actually have an effect. Yada yada, we've heard that before. I don't really care as long as the story is good. I have a feeling from the look of the footage that it's going to be very well paced, fluid gameplay, and I'm very excited for that if it comes to fruition. It is hitting Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One in summer of this year. Number 17 is Dragon. Dragon Quest Builders 2, a game that is kind of Minecraft, kind of an adventure action RPG. I know that sounds kind of weird, but in truth, it's a really cool looking game. It's a pretty well liked game in Japan, and I have a feeling it's going to be good here. The original Dragon Quest Builders is a lot of fun, and it connected really well with the first Dragon Quest, being a direct sequel that took place like 100 years after. Honestly, it's a sequel to a kind of a strange game that has its cake and eats it too, as far as being a Dragon Quest sequel and being a Minecraft derivative. I mean, it's been a while since I played the original Builders, but it did also come out on Nintendo Switch in 2018, so it is worth a play. Check it out in the meantime. Dragon Quest Builders 2 will be hitting Switch and PlayStation 4 sometime this year. Number 16 is Neo 2, which is just a great game. Neo, seriously, such a great Souls-like in that it sort of takes its own character. It creates a world that is, I mean, kind of semi-historical. It does take place in a historical period, but it's kind of an alternate history. Obviously, a lot of what goes on in it isn't possible, but they are adding character customization and supposedly more satisfying deaths. They claim they were a little cautious with the first game, which is I mean, nice to hear because I thought it was really a like refreshing sort of interesting take on that type of a game. But they said this time around the gloves are off and I am interested to find out whatever that means. I enjoyed the first a lot. We don't have a date yet, but it's supposedly going to be coming in 2019 and yeah, we are ready. Number 15 is God Eater 3, an action RPG that looks honestly pretty promising. The game takes place in or around the Ash area area, which is a sort of unspecified devouring cataclysm, something that people have dealt with and that you will continue to deal with during the course of the game. It's got a great anime visual style to it, and it's bringing dual wielding in, which Rage Burst didn't have that. They haven't released a massive amount of information, but I'm quite interested in it. It looks pretty, and it looks like the type of action RPG that I particularly like, so I'll be looking forward to when it hits on January 24th, which is not long from now, and then in February, 
on the 8th that will hit Steam. Number 14 is The Division 2, which if you can recall, The Division was kind of a little disappointing. I mean, I'm not saying that it was bad, it was just very Ubisoft and not on the great end of the Ubisoft catalog, so to speak. Honestly, there was a lot more promise in the announcement than was delivered in the game, but I think there's some interesting stuff that we've learned about the sequel, A, it's a mature rated game with hammer killings and quote unquote drug kitchens. Honestly, I'm really kind of waiting for the beta, but if it gets us closer to what was originally promised with The Division, I'm pretty much there. I really liked what The Division could have been. The Division 2 will release on March 15th for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Number 13 is an untitled Pokemon RPG. It is the newest entry in the core series of Pokemon. So, well, let's go is cool. This is like the more, hey, it's a new friggin' Pokemon RPG title. It's supposedly a little harder, a little more of what you're used to from a traditional Pokemon game. And let's just be completely honest, that's great. We don't have a lot of info, we haven't seen the game yet, but we know it's coming second half of 2019 to the Nintendo Switch. Number 12 is Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order. The Team Ninja action RPG series is landing exclusively next on the Switch. If you're not familiar, you select teams of various heroes and more or less is a dungeon crawler, but in Marvel. And it's a really good example of a dungeon crawler. We actually don't have a lot of information on this game other than it's the third in the series and the series has been well received for good reason, I think. It's kind of an over the top action RPG type game and that's great. It's perfect for that. We don't have a specific date for it, but it is coming sometime in 2000. 2019 with Team Ninja developing. I'm looking forward. Number 11 is Code Vein, an anime style, very dark, very post-apocalyptic, very anime, post-apocalyptic vampire Souls-like. Honestly, I love the look of this game. I mean, you could easily just describe it as anime Dark Souls, but there's definitely a lot more to the look than that. If it's anything like any other Souls-like, it's not just a carbon copy because different franchises obviously end up focusing on different things. The inclusion of the vampire element is honestly what intrigues me, and I'm sure we'll find out more about that soon. We don't have a release date, but it is coming to Microsoft Windows, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 sometime this year. Number 10 is Shenmue 3, which promises to be quite a much larger game than the two previous games. They've talked about the idea that you'll have more freedom and more importantly, there will be a combat system that is supposedly significantly better than the previous combat system. This is good to hear because the previous combat system was not the high point of Shenmue. In fact, the team has gone out of its way to reassure that the game would be much more playable than the previous games, which is interesting to hear. Their claim is that the game will be 50% old ideas, 50% new ideas, which is a change from saying 70% old ideas, 30% new ideas from an earlier press conference. I'm excited. I think that it's probably going to be a pretty big event and has the potential to really sort of be the white whale, so to speak. Shenmue 3 will be hitting Windows and PlayStation 4, on August 27th. Number nine is Judgment, a game that actually takes place in the Yakuza world, but follows a completely different person, a private investigator who is investigating a serial murder case. It does borrow from Yakuza in a lot of respects. The location, for instance, is the same. A lot of assets are shared between the games, but the gameplay and story are pretty different, at least outside of the fighting, which has been refined from Yakuza 0. It is a very well received game in Japan where it came out late in 2018. It was very well reviewed, people were very impressed with it, and that to me says it makes sense to trust the people that make Yakuza, which I think was a pretty obvious fact anyway, but we don't have a concrete date, but it is coming to PlayStation 4 in 2019. Come on, it's more stuff happening in the Yakuza world. I want that. Number eight is Dragon Age The Dread Wolf Rises. Now, that's not an official title. It is a working title. It is a cool title, and I hope that it remains the title. This is kind of a Hail Mary inclusion on this list. It's a doubtful release for 2019, but we don't know for sure. I have some Pretty high hopes of learning more about it soon at least, but we'll see. Otherwise, it's another Dragon Age game and it merits talking about just on that. I mean, we will find an excuse. We know nothing about it other than this new Dragon Age game coming, hopefully soon. Number seven, another Bioware inclusion, Anthem. A game that I want to say I have high hopes for because a lot of the 
demo footage that we've seen looks a bit like Destiny, but more like as far as options available with gameplay and considering that Bioware is much more oriented towards story and things like that. It's a very interesting proposition. I like the idea of jetpacks. I like the fact that it's third person. I like the fact that it kind of looks like Destiny, but also looks very different. And I'm really looking forward to playing it on Windows, PlayStation 4 or Xbox One on February 22nd. Number six is Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord, a game that we have been anticipating forever. It was announced way back in 2012, and since I've been with Game Ranks, I have talked about this every year. It's a lot like Crackdown. This game takes place 210 years before Warband, during the decline of the Cauldron Empire, which is an interesting time, considering it's meant to be an analog for the Roman Empire, and the various kingdoms that formed after the Roman Empire will all have analogs most likely in this this game. Mountain Blade is just a good series. The games are fun, they're a little bit graphically simple, and all things considered what we've seen of Bannerlord is that, but that doesn't mean it isn't going to be an incredibly good game. I'm really looking forward. It's coming to Microsoft Windows hopefully sometime this year, we'll see. Number 5, The Surge 2, which is kind of a robotic, science fiction, tinged Dark Souls-like game, promising that the game will take place in a much larger environment, a devastated city, and the thing they're talking about is the idea of expanding a lot on the formula. The developers seem a lot like what they're trying to say is, it's the same but bigger, which is something I frankly would like to hear in this type of a game's sequel. They're also going to be adding limb targeting, which is maybe something that might really separate it from other Souls-likes, we'll see. But the overall main takeaway is that there's a sequel to a great game coming. The Surge 2 is coming sometime this year to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Windows, so look out for that. Number four is The Outer Worlds, and I'm gonna just go ahead and say this is the one that I think is most likely to come out in this year that I'm most excited about. What I mean by that is it is a game by Obsidian in the nature of Fallout New Vegas, except using Unreal, meaning it's just gonna inherently probably be much easier for them to make good. When they made New Vegas, they had to do it on Gamebryo because that's how Bethesda works, but seeing them freed of that kind of makes me very happy. Also, just seeing everything about this game makes me happy. It looks amazing. I'm quite excited for it. It's coming to Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. I'll be there. Number three is Kingdom Hearts 3, essentially the premier strange combination ultimate crossover type series. Like, people talk about the Avengers, like it's the ultimate crossover series, those people haven't played Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts is a massively complex, I don't even pretend to understand the story entirely, saga that is frankly one of the most enjoyable things that's ever happened. It's a little dark, it's a little cartoony, probably because it's a combination of Square and Disney. And given the idea that Disney now owns Marvel and Star Wars, I'm pretty sure Kingdom Hearts 3 is probably gonna be cool. I mean, there's at least a lot of cameo potential. That's not hitting long from now. That's hitting January 25th, and it'll be out on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. That's gonna be big, so look out for it. Number two is Wasteland 3, the squad-based, turn-based role-playing game. It, of course, comes to us after Wasteland 2, which was a while ago, not super long, but long enough, four years between games. Wasteland 3 will be taking place in Colorado, of course, after the apocalypse, it's called Wasteland. Wasteland 2 was heavily based on squads, customizing various characters, both playable and non-playable alike. And I think continuing the second's story, which took place in an alternate history where a nuclear war between the US and the Soviet Union happened, should be nothing but interesting. Wasteland 3 is hitting Linux, Mac OS, PlayStation 4, Windows, and Xbox One in 2019 sometime. And finally, number one, Cyberpunk 2077. If it makes it out this year, Keeping in mind, they are taking their sweet time with this, and for good reason, it's a massive project that looks amazing. Like, what we've seen of this game has really, it's CD Projekt Red at their best, I guess, to put it in the best way I can. But knowing that, knowing that they're a developer that's kind of like, yeah, we'll take our sweet time if we need to, and seeing what we've seen so far, the level of detail, the color palette, the fact that they aren't just drowning us in nighttime, they're giving us day and night in a cyberpunk dystopia, I like that a lot. Frankly, the action we've seen has been quite interesting so far as well. Hopefully it retains all of the detail and all of the ideas that we've already seen on display. I think it will. I think that they will not play around. They're, again, 
a very good developer by my standards anyhow. Hopefully we'll be seeing the game this year. Fingers crossed, not 100%, but fingers are very crossed because it would be nice. Couple of bonus games for you, Yokai Watch 3, which apparently boasts a new battle system. I'm looking forward to it. It is a 3DS game, so it's probably not gonna be like a graphical powerhouse, but Yokai Watch 2 and other series entries have been enjoyable. That's hitting 3DS on February 8th. Iron Danger, which is a tactical squad RPG that puts us in a similar perspective, the kind of Infinity Engine oriented Pillars of Eternity type throwback games, but ultimately gives us an undo function, which is interesting and does all of its world building based on Finnish mythology. So it looks pretty cool. It is coming sometime this year to PlayStation 1, Xbox One and Microsoft Windows. Finally, Town is a game coming to you from Game Freak, the creators of Pokemon, it is a working title, but it describes the game pretty well. It's a JRPG that takes place entirely in a single town that monsters begin appearing in, and there's apparently a mystery to solve about the town. It's supposedly coming this year, although we know next to nothing beyond that. We've seen a little bit of footage, we've heard a working title, and we've heard a vague plot, but it's intriguing. Game Freak is a good developer, and they don't make a lot of outside Pokemon content, so I'm excited it's hitting Switch sometime this year. What 2019 RPGs are you looking forward to most? Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, so click the subscribe button, and do not forget to hit the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.